Hey guys, what's up? Serpentine19 here, taking a look at the Wildstar Open Beta that happened a couple of days ago, ended on Sunday. It went for 10 days and I got my character up to level 21. I think I was getting pretty close to level 22. So I got fairly far in the game. Uh, there were others that got further. But yeah, as you can see, I'm currently here well, the footage in the background I'm not actually playing at the moment because I took this footage in advance. Um, what I'm doing here at the moment is going through an adventure, which is the Storm Talons Lair adventure, which is kind of like a dungeon in other MMOs, where you go through, kill a couple of mini bosses, and then finally come to a last major boss. So I'm in here with another five people. These were all randoms that I grouped up with. So yeah, the character I was using in this was on the Dominion side. There's two sides in Wildstar, the Dominion versus the Exiles. And Dominion being more of the pure evil kind of side and the Exiles being more or less the good side. But they both have their good and bad tendencies here and there. Uh, so yeah, I chose the Makari race which is kind of this really tall, really strong um, mechanical race, as you can see here. And I chose to go into the warrior class because I wanted to get the most out of the combat system that it could show me, which is pretty good, but not revolutionary. I've seen a couple of other games use the same combat system. Uh, for example, a free-to-play MMORPG Raider, Raider Z had a pretty similar combat system with the whole dodging and the skill shots and everything. Uh, yeah, so I chose the warrior side and then there's another sub path you can take which is kind of like what, kind of like mini games in the game where you can go and um, either go exploring uh, search for lore and stuff like that. For my pathway though I chose the soldier pathway which just gives you a, a little bit more fighting in the game. So yeah if you're into fighting I'd suggest going that one. Uh, so yeah uh, a couple of things I want to talk about the game is that when in the first first area which is level 1 to 10 I found extremely easy I don't think I died once the yeah that area was very much the tutorial uh, will get you to level 10 really quickly kind of area I noticed the difficulty ramp up in the level 10 to 20 area specifically about halfway through it so level 15 um, I found myself dying quite a lot there and it was actually difficult. Uh, I had to um, grind, well not so much grind, go do other missions, side missions, they weren't the main missions, but yeah, you, I had to go and do a couple of side missions to get some levels to take, to finish off the main story, um, story quest line. Uh, so yeah, there's, there's a fairly large um, difficulty at ramping up in the level 10 to 20 areas. Um, something they've tried to change is with in other MMOs when you go to collect stuff or you have to go repair stuff or something like that you usually <clears throat> you usually go up to it and you just press a button wait a couple of seconds as it goes through an animation and fixes it for you or collects it for you. Uh, Wildstar adds a couple of mini games into it. So, for example, there's a couple of memory games. Um, well, a couple, I say a couple, there was only one memory game. Where it gives you a four-coloured four -coloured kind of uh, panel that lights up before you can put any input in and then you just have to copy the input. So that's usually used for hacking electronic stuff. Um, then there's the uh, just spam tapping 
so pressing F continuously until the bar fills. And then they've got um, a holding one where you just hold, which is pretty basic. That one wasn't really that great. And then there's the timed ones where the bar goes left to right and you have to press F, to F at the, um, the right time and then it activates. If you fail any of these, it usually, um, whatever you're doing usually malfunctions and ends up shooting you backwards. But if you just can't get it, like in the memory games, if you just can't um, uh, complete it and memorize it all, um, it does let you do a manual override of it, which takes a little bit longer, but yeah. Uh, something else I noticed in a lot of the areas, um, the enemies. Well, you're introduced to an enemy pretty much in each new, um, each new kind of like city or town, you're introduced to one new enemy. However, all the other enemies around you are either the exact same, only a couple of levels higher than an enemy you faced in a previous zone, or they're slightly reskinned. For example, there were, um, Malverines, which are kind of these, um, these big werewolf kind of animals and later on they appeared early on in the game and later on in the game they reappeared again as um, oh, I can't remember the exact word but they're like cybernetic Malverines and they just had a couple of metal pieces on them and such but yeah they do reuse quite a lot of the um, previous em eh, previous enemies that you've seen before in the earlier levels the crafting system in Wildstar is actually pretty cool. Uh, it didn't... While it was interesting and it had quite a bit of depth in it, it still felt a bit limited. It might just be because it was a level-based thing. Maybe when you get a higher level you can do a lot more with it. But I chose to do for trade skills, which is kind of what you expect. Trade skills like mining, um, weapon smithing, armor smithing, uh, farming I believe was one. Yeah, there's a whole range of them. Uh, I chose weapon smithing and mining just to see how the how it all worked out. I was going to choose armor smithing as well. You can choose, I believe you could choose as many as you want. But to be really good at one of them, you need to just choose one of them and focus on one of them until the end of the game. Otherwise, you'll just be really average on everything. Uh, so yeah, in the crafting system, I'll chuck up a video of the crafting system here. Um, it's basically a... You get a schematics, unlock schematics for certain weapons, certain armor, depending on your trade skill. And it lets you put in a attribute, such as grit or intelligence, and these all affect your overall, um, your overall statistics, giving you extra little boosts and everything. But you could only add one. Um, I believe later on you can add a lot more because... As you could probably see on the video right now, um, there's quite a couple of the lines coming down. Whether there's going to be more slots that you can put um, stuff into, I'm not sure. But yeah, if you can, you can probably start making some really, um, really powerful weapons or armor or whatever you're wanting to make. Uh, yeah, so you put in this little... Uh, slot thing that gives you a statistic boost and then you put in like a power gem or a power cell I've forgotten what they're called right now but they basically let you buff up the weapon a little bit more it, so say you had 40 on the original if you put a power cell in it can go up to 50 or 60 if you go over the power limit it starts to give you a percentage rating of the failing yeah a failing percentage rate of the weapon you're currently crafting. Uh, it can be uh, beneficial going over the power limit 
because obviously you're getting more more buffs through your weapon but you can also lose a lot of XP a lot of items uh, the items put in to craft the actual weapon so yeah there's that I did notice while playing the game there were a couple of memory leaks. It was getting up close to 2.5 gigs to 3 gigs of um, RAM being used and I did experience a couple of crashes. Uh, these were most present when um, traveling in the taxi was one of them. Uh, the frame rate just completely dropped there. Um, obviously because of the draw distance they have and how much you can see. Um, I still think that needs to be f figured out. Yeah, the game shouldn't be doing that. Uh, even on my system it shouldn't be doing that. With the other games I've been playing with that much on screen. There is a housing system in Wildstar where you can build your own house and customize furniture and stuff and sometimes when you do a mission or something you get an item that you can show off in your house um, but that's the customization of the house is kind of a small part of your of the housing system the main point of the housing system is to put down say a mine next to your house or say a farm next to your house so you can get resources not by going into the world by just going to your housing plot and just um, mining farming cooking um, weapon smithing or whatever you're wanting to do there and it's right it's just right there you don't have to go searching for it uh, for guilds it's probably gonna be extremely important uh, one thing you can do with the housing plots is put entrance entrances to certain dungeons, adventures, and um, other missions, and war plots and stuff like that. So yeah, that's a really quick way for guilds to kind of just go to someone's housing plot and then enter the instance through there. So yeah, that was really cool. And the customization of all the items in the housing system, you can build items inside your house and outside your house on the plot. And you're given quite a lot of um, customization options, including how large you want the items to be and where you want to place them. You can pretty much place them anywhere you want and rotate them any way you want. You can even put them through the floor. Um, I did see someone using one of the larger houses. It didn't have stories to it, it was just completely bare. Like, um, not stories, like levels there was only the floor level and what he did was create a wall that protruded outside of his house but obviously when he was outside of the house you couldn't see the protruding wall so when he was inside he was able to create um levels in his house so he could have the floor level a bedroom level up higher and stuff like that so if you have a creative side i imagine the housing system could be rather interesting and could um, be a lot of the game for some people. So yeah, that's pretty much my thoughts on the Wildstar open beta that happened a while ago. I tried to get a pretty good impression of it getting up to level 21. So yeah, the game will be releasing on June 3rd. It, the Wildstar was delayed from last year to June this year. So they're just trying to fix up a couple of things. So again, that release date will be June 3rd, 2014. All right.
Corporation reanimate. Thank <laughs> you. 
Mr. Claremont, I feel as if we are boldly venturing into an unexplored abyss, shattering the boundaries of science as we pursue our great work here on Nexus. I would never tell the others this, but I truly believe that divinity... Thank you.